Hi, y'all. My name is Danasia, and I'm a 22-year-old type A black girl from Las Vegas who just moved to New York City last year to work for L'Oreal as a financial analyst. Hey, y'all. My name is Faith, and I'm a 23-year-old type A black girl from AZ living in Denver, working remotely for Cisco as a business analyst. This season is finally here, and we can't wait to share more about our personal lives, working big girl jobs, relationships, and life in general as type A black girls. Hope you enjoy. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Type A Black Girl Season 7, Episode 8. We're very excited for this one. I know. We keep winding down. Like, this season went by a little quick. I'm not going to lie. A little quick, but also we we batch filmed a lot of episodes this season, and that's been our goal since Season 1. So we're getting there. We're getting the hang of this podcasting thing for sure. <laughs> it might have took about two years, but hey, we, you know, we finally, we, we had a good cadence. And I mean, realistically, mm-hmm. like, this is the first season where we actually had Um, like a backup film before the season started like Mm -hmm. we only had a two-week break between seasons and we was like we're on we're on our grind we knocked it out real quick so yeah shout out to us okay because we're filming all this before christmas between birthdays holidays trips it's been a rough one if y'all didn't get a season this this season i wouldn't blame us i'm not gonna hold you i'm not gonna hold you either but enjoy it now because we will have a long off season Heads up now. Yeah. And we know yeah. that sometimes whenever we have long off seasons, the girlies be messaging us like, hey, um, you coming back? Did, did we miss the episode drop this this week? And I'll be like, guys, I'm sorry. It's it's off season. You got to wait till, in this case, probably February. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. Hate to break the news. But you will have episodes up until basically the end of December. So just January off. Yeah. But it'll, sure. it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so class announcements um we're at 193 youtube subscribers so yeah seven more people you know just get on y'all zoom obviously a lot of people did since the last time we updated um we also read verity by colleen hoover for our last book club all the girlies Mm -hmm. shout out to anybody that came to the book club meeting you guys were so sweet like Mm -hmm. amazing the the discussion was was 10 out of 10 yeah yeah like it was a really good time i think that was our best book club meeting yet so thank you guys if you came Oh, yeah. And the discussion was 10 out of 10. Like, we had some people that were Team Verity, some people that were Team Lowen. Like, yeah, it was great. Um, Mm -hmm. But we also voted on the Nets book, and we're going to be doing Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So if you've read it already, you can just come to the book club meeting when we post it. Um, It'll probably be sometime in February because you guys could just take the whole month of January to read it, realistically. Um, So the girlies in that book club decided, and this is also your incentive, that if you come to the book club meetings, you can help decide the Nets book. And a lot mm-hmm. of the girlies were like, hey, Verity was a little, a little scary, very suspenseful book. So we're doing mm-hmm. something lighter. So Seven Husbands will be like, I don't know if it's a rom-com or just rom nope, rom but, but the girlies don't were know. excited. One girl had a book ready on her side table. It was like, I've, I've been re- wanting to read this. So hey, yeah. everybody, every it was a unanim- unanimous vote. And we do have some like scarier, like suspenseful ones for, for next time. But we're going to, we're going to hip hop. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So, and I, I bought it back in 2020. I just never read it. So wow, I'm ready to I finally, yeah, because I was seeing it on like, like book talk during COVID. Um, but yeah, guys, so make sure you click the link in our link tree and our show notes to join our group me um, yeah. and just see all, all of our links. We noticed there was, there wasn't really many calls in the request line. So if you guys have any dilemmas, make sure to submit that to free suggestion bots. It's in our link. Um, mm-hmm. You can Say whatever, type whatever, whatever dilemma you have, we will answer it on the pod. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's get into question of the week. So, yeah. Faith, um, what trip are you most excited about next year? Before we do that, I just want to say, y'all get y'all calls in now, because if y'all don't get y'all calls in now, you're going to have to wait until February. And if it's time sensitive, you're going to have to wait until February. Heads up. But yes, the trip I'm most excited for is Italy. Um, going to Italy in June. Very, very excited. I actually promised Dammy for his birthday probably two years ago when I thought I had money but the budget just wasn't budgeting when it was time to buy the tickets and I'm like what did I what was I thinking and on top of that I ended up buying a house that's kind of where all my money went to realistically um but yeah we're going to Italy and when I tell you next year is jam-packed like all I'm I, I was like you know what I'm gonna be a really outstanding worker January through August because after that I'm gonna be taking to PTO no. Uh, every single month is going to be something. Um, one of my coworkers, my friend, one of my best friends, India, she invited me to a 
group 25th birthday party with her and her best friend. And it's going to be a lot of barking because all of the cues have booked their rooms. Um, and that's, that's I'm a like, good trip to be on. <laughs> I'm like, oh goodness. So me and Dan, we are going, it's going to be Mexico. So like, we like, but okay, let, let's, let's just talk about where we're traveling. Okay. Um, what we plan to travel January. I'm seeing my friend. She, I'm looking at her. Um, February, I'm going to Vegas for Valentine's day, March fees coming and girl, Oh, okay. Nas dropped her tickets and then they're he's she's coming to Denver during the time fees coming here. So we will oh. be in line on Thursday. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Giving pink today. Oh, extremely excited. The, uh fee's gonna be here for four days. She she actually booked it like two months ago. She's like, Hey girl, the ticket's cheap. Can I come? I was like, I'm just freaking look. So very right. excited. Um, April. Nothing as of right now. That might be my only chill month. May. We're going to go to Houston to go see um, Lola's little sister graduate high school. Aww. June is Italy. July. I know I've been telling all my friends the engagement party, which is going to be in September, but it may be in July. We just need to, we're going to sit down tomorrow and figure out the venues. So I'll let everybody know. It'll be between July and September vibes. Um, August. Nothing at the right now. September. <laughs> I don't freaking know. October freaking Cabo November can't flog now oh I'm, I told Amy to, like two weeks ago I want can't flog now lodge, lodging VIP tickets and all the food bought and the flights that's when I'm going for my birthday and I said whatever you pay for that I will I will give you half for your birthday you know so um uh, and then December is family Arizona and January is, I'm not going to tell you all yet, but all the bachelor, bachelorettes, girlies know, um, going out the country, using our passports for January for the bachelorette. So really fun time. What about you, moms? What you got going on over there? Yeah. I mean, yeah. January, January, everybody is coming to me. Yes. Um, Blair's visiting me. You're visiting me. I'll probably mm -hmm. see Peyton. So realistically, it'll be a great time. Um, mm -hmm. February, TBD. I really don't know. Probably nothing. Honestly, I feel like February, I just need to recoup. Like, it's been yes. a long year. And honestly, January is supposed to be my saving month. But I feel like the way things are headed, every weekend is already booked up. And it's probably not going to be that. I'm not going to hold you. Mm -hmm. So January, January will be busy. February will probably be like low key. Um, mm -hmm. March, I'll probably go back for my dad's birthday to Vegas. Okay. Um, April will probably be chill. May, I'll probably go back for to see Sam graduate. because She's graduating mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. Then June, I'm planning to go to Tanzania. So we going to Africa. Yeah. Wow. Group single. Uh me and Mia. And no. well it might it might be a group. We we haven't decided yet. But okay. yeah, so we're we already looked at tickets. It's probably gonna be a trip to Kenya and doing like a full safari tour and then going to Tanzania after that and going to Zanzibar. So literally we went on Zanzibar TikTok and it just has to happen. So probably Tanzania that that month, which is probably my my like big trip of the year because for me I like to plan like a big trip and go all out for that one mm -hmm. trip, like once yeah. a year. So that'll probably be the big trip. And then what month is that? That's June. July, my grandparents want to plan like a like a trip. I told them we should just do a, a huge family trip, both sides of the family, because mm -hmm. for one, my mom's sister married my dad's brother. So like they yeah. should they share in-laws. So mm -hmm. we just, you know, I was like, right. it helps that we could just have everybody in the same place at the same time. So mm -hmm. I'm planning on hopefully they don't decide on July or August because the summertime's already going to be crazy. And right. we just do a huge family trip. Like they're looking at either like um, San Juan, like either going to Puerto Rico yeah. or going to DR. So hopefully that'll either be either July, Christmas in July or Christmas in December. Hopefully it's December. Back. Um, August should be chill, but realistically, everybody at work goes to vacation on August. So I think I might do like a domestic solo trip or something small during August, mm -hmm. September, hopefully doing something for my birthday. I really have not decided yet, but some type of birthday activity, October, I don't really do nothing in October. That's just Halloween. And then mm -hmm. November, I'm going to the Philippines. So, mm -hmm. or, or Thailand. I haven't decided. I don't know. I don't know I which one. It was Thailand. I feel like she's mentioned both. Either way, yep. it's going to be a huge trip with mm -hmm. all of my line sisters, Sam, my pro fights, everybody. Ooh. So that'll Ooh. be a huge girls trip. Um, that's November. And then, yeah, December, 
hopefully family time but it really depends because the way it's looking I think we might do a huge trip because when it was my grandpa's 70th we were just like you know it's been rare that the whole family has gotten together and you really don't know how much time you have left with people which is scary Mm -hmm. but like it's true and I'm sitting here like hey y'all we ain't had no trips or no family reunions and then I realized Mm -hmm. like I'm the oldest cousin I guess this is on me to plan I looked around at the ages and I said, oh, half y'all can't drive. I got to get on my Zoom. So, Is that baby, bro? Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. So I'm probably going to just coordinate that with my grandparents and all the adults because we just have to group by family. Right. Realistically, it needs to be some type of structure. So mm-hmm. 2024, I thought it would be like a saving type of year. It's not. Too, bro. I was like, I'm not going to travel at all 2024. I started putting stuff right dates down. I said, "All right, well, never mind. Break that, huh?" Literally, literally, literally. And depending on depending on all the bridal activities, if that's in July or September, like all that's got to fit in there too. So it's just gonna be, you know, we go with the flow. Spend it, the, spend it while you got it. Spend it while you got it. We we don't got no kids either. Well, so they were saying you you spend at minimum twenty k on kids each year. And so either way, <laughs> it's free money. That we're right. Spending. All right. And it won't be there forever. So I'll take it. Okay. So, um, yeah, should be fun. And my manager talking about some, I should have put this in RBT. My manager, oh, we haven't even hit RBT. You know what? Let's hit RBT first. Yeah, let's do that one first. If you're new here, girl, I'm like, well, I'll be trying to get ahead of ourselves. Uh, If you're new here, RBT is a rose button thorn. Rose is something good that happened in your week, but it's something you're looking forward to. And thorn is something bad that happened in your week. Moms, you want to go first? Yeah, so my rose is that this week is the L'Oreal holiday party, and I am so freaking excited because mm-hmm. I I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's me watching Hallmark movies as a kid and always seeing, like, huge company holiday parties and, like, I don't know. It just feels like it's in every single, like, holiday movie. Mm-hmm. But they sent us an email talking about this holiday party. It's L'Oreal's, like, 70th year of being, like, L'Oreal USA. So they are going all out. They, they, they said the dress code was dressed to the nines and dressed to impress. Mm, and the, the dress code is like 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 silver glitz and glam and basically it's giving whatever you wore to renaissance but but professional is, yeah. is the vibe so i'm so excited and they, they have earth wind and fire performing I'm not sure how they got a hold of them <laughs> I, said, I, don't know. Know choice. I don't know what the budget was but it's getting mm. unlimited because it's basically anyone that works out of the New York or New Jersey office is invited. That's like thousands of employees. So they rented out this huge convention center and it's just going to be a whole thing. So I will give a recap on how that goes because I am so excited. But I'm also in a dilemma because it's such a weird thing of trying to figure out what to wear to a holiday party where they say dress to impress. But it's like there's a very thin line between looking cute and being professional. Mm. And I still to say all my coworkers, I asked them, like, what are y'all wearing? And they're like, oh, girl, we going all out. And I'm like, well, let me see exactly what you're wearing. Because your all out and my all out might be different. And I'm not trying mm-hmm. to show up looking like, why did she wear that? that Guys, way. first of all, I ha- this is the first time I'm doing a demonstration on the pod. Because I just got to show y'all why I was stressed out. So I ordered this dress on Akira. Mm-hmm. And my mom was like, go with the red vibe. Everybody's going to be in glitz and glam, girl. Like, it's Christmas. We're red. I said, okay. So I found this dress. And it, it had a little tool, a little tool um, train. train, right? on on the picture but i said i don't think it's that dramatic in person look at this thing literally the mops. Mops. <laughs> mops. That's good. the train the train is giving i do but in red like i literally was i tried this on and i said what is on my body i cannot show up in this I don't know what to do. So I got to return. I had to return this. I, I had to return. Like, but I just got to go ship it off to UPS. It just keeps going. Mom, you would have to hold that the whole freaking night, bro. There's no way. Also, y'all have never seen our bottom halves. So I never. <laughs> I'm like, hey, second half of the body reveal. But yeah, <laughs> this is insane. Like, so I was stressing because I was like, I got to find a new dress. So I have a dress on the way. We'll see what it looks like. That's it's a little less like that, but. I promise it did not. No, Akira. It did not look like that on the side. Mm -hmm. So thank God that was not my like last resort because I would have been in there like 
I'm about to wear, bro. And this is your right. time to show them. Like, this is Denasia. This is Denasia Super Bowl. <laughs> this this is my Super Bowl. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll let you guys know how the holiday party is, but. Um, you definitely got to post on Type A about, like a, like, a full story. Like, not a story post. Or a story post, too, but, like, a main post about it. Yeah, literally, because this this is this is like I'm really looking forward to it. Everybody in my entire company is going, so it should be a time. Um, but Christmas itinerary this weekend, I only have like five days left here to get all the most out of being in New York during Christmas. So I'm doing all the things this weekend. I'm seeing the tree. I'm going to Bryant Park Village. Um, we're doing like a friend Christmas weekend, Christmas movie night, watching hot cook. I said watching hot cocoa, drinking hot cocoa, watching movies, the whole nine. So that mm-hmm. should be fun this weekend. Um, my thorn is that since this party was coming up, I was like, these braids got to go. They looked crazy. Once I got them wet in Puerto Rico, it was time to go a long time ago, right? I've been in Puerto Rico. I've been back for weeks. So I started doing my hunt because as you guys know, I've had experiences with stylists having holes in their draws, what they do in my hair. <laughs> I've had stylists cancel on me. I've had stylists leave to go get supplies from the beauty supply store and come back with Wendy's. I've had a <laughs> lot of experiences. And I said, I'm trying to find somebody else, right? And I was like, it's giving silk press season. I'll just get a basic silk press. They can't mess that up. Mm-hmm. As long as my curls come back, there's no way you can mess up a silk press. Mm-hmm. I found this lady and I was like, I, I tried to book with her, but look, God was looking out for me because it like my, my card did not accept the purchase it declined it even though there was money on the card but the, my card said we don't know who this this uh vendor is so it declined it because it looks suspicious right mm-hmm. so i go back and read her her policy while i message her like hey is there any way i can just venmo you the money because for some reason my card keeps declining your like your site and she was like yeah but i mean i just wanted to give you a heads up that like the 65 you paid for the silk press is just a deposit and I said, well, then how much is the silk press? She said, oh, babes, depending on how much hair you have, I charge by the hour. So I actually charge 65 per hour. I said, huh? Depending on how much hair you have? So what if it only takes 30 minutes? Are you gonna- And what, what if you purposely take your time? Bro, I know, that's the, that's the hardest part about per hour per hour she said well you know i'm 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 a i'm a hard working stylist and i'm just trying to girl that don't mean you charge 65 dollars per hour if you take three hours on my silk press i'm gonna be paying how much like that don't make no i'm you get paid more than me an hour what, what are you talking about to silk to press out some hair do you have to come wash or does she wash it as well she does wash it and that's what i was afraid of because i'm like oh, if you take forever yeah. she gonna be like Turn around, like she just gonna be doing the most. I already know because there's no way she's only getting sixty five dollars to do my hair, my whole head in an hour, including wash and blow dry. Oh yeah, no, it don't, no, not even Flash could do that. Literally. Yeah, no. So I said, I said, okay, so it's giving like even if you go five minutes into the third hour, I'm still paying you for three hours because it's by yeah. the hour. Absolutely. So yeah, I say that to say shout out to God for um looking out for me and declining that because I said, well, I mean. Deposit to go through anyway, so no thank you. <laughs> she yeah, was like, no. oh, like anything else I could have done? Girl, not do that. Nothing per hour. What? Like, per hour is insane. Not even a like a reasonable price. So um, yeah, and you have to add you have to pay to to have your hair curl. They don't even curl your hair for free. They if you wanted beach waves, color? you had to pay fifteen dollars for a beach wave add on. What's going on? What is I said it's like? it's slow with that. It's slow. Um, but on the topic of final, of like my final thorn. So I think I mentioned before that I was trying to be a Pilates girl. I, this actually happened not last week, but I tried to be a Pilates girl. And when I tell you, this is your sign, especially if you use class pass, I really recommend using class pass. If you're trying to get into like going to the gym and stuff, because I use that and you basically get like free credits for your first month and you can use it at any location, not sponsored. Like you can use it at any location yeah. that's like near you and i did it um for the first month and i was trying out like a pilates class uh, a dance studio a yoga studio and like a gym and you have 68 credits each class is like eight credits so you can really try out anything that you want right so i went to this pilates studio um and first of all it didn't really say much on the website but i called ahead of time and i was like hey like i'm a beginner i just want to make sure that this is beginner friendly because i know that sometimes different pilates classes can be intense right The lady's like, yeah, no worries. Like, it'll be perfectly fine. There's another girl in the class with you that will also be a beginner. Like, you're all good. 
And I was like, yeah. okay, perfect. First of all, I show up and she's like, you don't have your groupie socks? I said, I didn't, I didn't know there were groupie socks. And she was like, yeah, like Pilates, you have to have groupie socks. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. She's like, yeah, so you're gonna have to go barefoot, babes. I said, oh. They're in this nasty ass studio. What do you mean? <laughs> so first I'm barefoot, right? I I'm in there. The machine, it's like machine Pilates. And I've never seen a machine like that in my life. But moms, when I tell you it was the most intense hour of my life. I, I literally passed out in the middle of the session. I had to excuse myself out. It's what? called solid solid core. If you if you see a place called solid core. And it say Pilates, they lying, bro. They are, they do not do Pilates. It is the most intense version of Pilates. The second I got up in there, it's only 10 people, mind you. It's only 10 people. She puts me smack dab in the middle. And she's like, I'm gonna set you next to Julie because she's our like professional. And like, she actually teaches these classes part-time. So like, if anybody's gonna know what to do, it's gonna be Julie. So I'm watching Julie, not realizing that as this girl is giving us instructions on the intercom, like Julie's doing the most advanced version of said like, like whatever set it is. So let's say we're holding a plank, right? Julie's doing 80 pushups with a plank. So I'm trying to catch up with Julie like. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And she had like a microphone and like basically the best way I can describe the way she was like spitting off what the next move was sounded like an auction. She's like, hands on blue, move the weight to 30. If you're on 30, if you took under 30 class, you got to do blue. If you're not, you got to do red. No, 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 not turn, not turn. In 30 seconds, we're going to move or do put. Like literally just like that, that exact same speed for a, literally an entire hour. She's like, all right, move around. Come on, Danasia, you got it. Come on, Danasia. Calling me. I should never told that lady my name because she literally called me out the entire class. She's like, come on, Danasia. It's, it's your first time. I know, but don't worry. You got it. You got it. You got it. Dry up. First of all, I'm barefoot and I'm sweating. So my feet are sweating. She's like, dry off those toes. Come on, girl, you got. <laughs> I can dry them off where? Where am I going? And Julie's just doing her push ups. Like, I literally have never been more stressed in my life in my life and if you know pilates is already very intensive because it uses all of your muscles like it i've done volleyball i've done every every damn sport <laughs> nothing compared to that Hands on nothing world. compared to that moms when i tell you she kept calling me out the entire time julie going crazy nuts to me I, my feet keep slipping it feels nasty because it's sticky on on the mat She's yelling out all these orders. She's talking about, oh, if you only did 30 classes, you can stick to blue. But if you did more than that, you got to go to red. Oh, but Danasia, you got to go to green. I'm like, why do I got to go to green? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> and literally, I want to say like 40 minutes in, because I was trying to just like keep, keep track of time, but there's no clock in there. So I was just counting how many songs had passed so I could know when to be done. And by this point, I'm like, okay, it's got to be about 40 minutes in. We started doing like upper upper body and I have zero upper body strength. This is a sign that you can be skinny and completely out of shape. I had no upper body strength. And literally like we are, we are doing this move. I can't even describe it. I literally saw stars. And mind you, it's dark in there. It's dark and they have like blue lights on. So all I see is my reflection in the mirror and Julie nets me going, going ham, ham and turkey. And I literally like, and the music, it's just Dua Lipa in the back, just going. I'm just like, <laughs> And I'm the only, mind you, I'm the only black person as well. I'm the only black person. Everyone in there is like yoga mom, like yeah. they've been there. And the girl that she said was new, turns out she was just new to that location. She'd been doing this in Hoboken for years. So years. she's like, yeah. And they're like, woo, like yelling through it. And I'm literally dying. I'm literally dying. I literally saw stars. I've never like just almost passed out. Like I literally felt myself passing out. Oh and I looked at the instructor, I said, I literally did the church like I gotta go I said it's time to go she said it's okay but she's still on the mic so she's whispering it's okay you're good go ahead and take a break everybody here in my business like can she hold that could she hold the mic like you did not have to tell that on the mic so everybody hears me I I just grabbed my water bottle and I knew it was bad because I grabbed my water bottle I'm walking outside to the outside part barefoot that's how I knew it was bad 
feet black by the time I came home. Oh, I, I know you literally, oh, it was so bad. I literally went and laid, there was like a little like chair in front. I literally laid out on the chair like this. <laughs> laid out on the chair for like 15 minutes. Oh my and I was gosh. Like, I literally like passed out. And I came back inside right when they was ending. And Julie's still doing her push-ups. I'm like, it's time to go. I put my shoes on. I never, I've never left somewhere so quick. And there's this, there's this really nice gay guy that came to me after. He was like, hey girl, I saw you struggling, but I struggled too, and you got it. Honestly, I wasn't even doing the right moves the entire time. You just gotta, you just gotta fake it till you make it. And I said, listen, I was trying to, and I was not making it. And he was like, yeah, I know. And then the instructor came to me and she was like, you know, like, I know you said you were a beginner, but I think this is probably a good time to tell you that this is like Pilates on crack. So like, you know, whenever you book next time, just keep that in mind because this is actually our easiest class. I, I said Pilates on crack. She said, it's actually not even really Pilates. It's actually like core conditioning. And I you said, well, that'd be that. I said, well, if class pass could just add that in the fine print. That'd be great because nobody told me that. And I woke up like hella sore. So this is your sign. If you're going to book a Pilates, do low impact, low strength, and start off small. Or just, do, or just do yoga. But just make sure if you go on a solid core that they will work you and you might pass out. So that's, that's my thought. Hands on blue. Just chili is taking me out. Hands on I blue, have... turn around. Like, it was giving Simon Says. Sounds like football, bro. What? Bro. That's no. insane. That, Wow. Truly amazing. Um, Rose on my end. Um, by the time you listen to this, I will be on a cruise. It'll be my first day on the cruise. Very excited. My cousin, who used to be my arch nemesis. I mean, we used to hate each other so bad. I almost pushed her out on the freeway um, out of the car. Uh, yeah, it was it was bad. But yeah, we tie like a booty hole now. Um, another cousin, me. And... <laughs> He's actually flying in from Japan. Um, cause she is in the air force. So very excited. I haven't seen her about a year. That sounds mm -hmm. right. Um, year two, it's some change. I don't know. Seeing cousins, who knows? Um, and then my favorite cousin growing up, Sierra's coming and then hope and joy, my sisters. And, um, my, my cousin was actually getting her hair retwisted and she said her, um, her hair lady had like just these like big, fake boobs and they were just in her face like she's talking about f it's like it's like the nipples were pointing at my face and she was like like no i gotta find it she like i woke up to this text message and i'm literally like are you are you okay why would you text this to us this freaking early in the freaking morning like can i get a good morning can i get a hello like <laughs> what let me oh, she what she said she said Y'all, there's this lady that owns the shop that I go get my hair done at, and she's not wearing a bra, and she has a size F fake boobs, and the nipples are aggressively hard, like literally gumdrops, and she keeps making conversation. I can't control my face. <laughs> Mind <laughs> you, this was 11.39 p.m. I'm, I'm, I wake up, I'm like, can I get a good, good night, good morning, please? I know it's right morning time where you're at, but frick. And so at the same salon, She's like, oh, you're going on a crew, like da 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 da, because she's getting her hair retwisted. And she's like, oh, let me see, let me see your cousin. Oh, I guess where her niece is. So she shows Sierra, and she's like, oh, she can, she can model my, she can model my hair. You know, she's like, okay. She said, what's this one? Points to me. She's like, that's the brain. She talking about some. She could be my accountant. And then she, she points to Hope, talking about some. Oh, she does hair. Oh, she could also help me do hair. And she points to Joy. She's like, oh, she, she's like, oh, she runs track. She was like, well, she can steal money from the ATM and run. Are you creating a team for us? Like Ninja Turtle? What's money? Going What's going on? Why would you see us? And it was like, yeah, this is a good team. I know what they did. Like, I, I can make something happen for them. Like, what? So of course, I'm like, what? So yeah, very excited to see. They're trying, we're trying to, my cousin are trying to figure out the best way to bring hard liquor on this cruise and not get it taken so we've tried the sunscreen bottle hack my sister's like oh they're probably going to take it because they're getting a little hard and like you kind of know what sunscreen and what isn't especially if you shake it um and if they strict all that liquor going down the drain because they're not gonna let us take it on i'm you can bring one bottle on on a carnival cruise so i'm just gonna bring like 
it, it was really lit right before the pandemic, like 26 or 2017 is this bottle with a whole bunch of different color fruits on it. And I love it. Let me, I don't know what the freaking wine is, but it's, um, I was going to say for the Renaissance tour, I was seeing people that were, um, that were, that had like almost like glasses kind of that like you could, you could open them and they had liquor in them. Now, granted, you could probably only fit about two shots in those, but you could look at that yeah. too. Yeah. Um, the one I'm talking about is Capriccio Bubbly Sangria. So I'm going to bring that super cute, really fun. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I don't want nothing crazy. Y'all know I don't be drinking like that. I told my, I told my cousins, I will take two shots a day with my little wine, my sangria, and that's it, y'all. And I'm, I'm going to read my cute little books on the beach on my, on my iPad. And we're going to call that a day. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I, 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 if I make it to the club three out of the five nights, I will be proud of myself. That's what I'm telling myself because y'all, I, I'm t- I'll be tired. My, my sisters are like, yeah, I'm tired too. My bedtime's nine. I'm like, oh, frick, we the grandma. We the youngest, but we the grandmas. So definitely we'll have a recap, on not on the pod, but on Instagram for sure. Um, but I've done so much therapy this year. I hit my deductible and oh, now wow. I have $10 therapy and it's literally so amazing. I, I don't know how long, this is. I don't know if it's a deductible per year. I don't know. All I know is it'd be like 967, 1068. 1076. I'm like, that's the number I'd like to see. Because before, <laughs> so um, yeah, shout out to shout out to therapy and shout out to not paying a lot of money. And I'm um, the thing is, I pay my therapy through my HSA. So not that it's not my money, but it's not in my bank account. So it hurts less because um, it's pre tax. <laughs> okay. Um, and then Thorn, um, my period, I feel like I said before, but my period has been rocking me and socking me. I've been having pre-period not really cramp pre-period insanity and then I'm also having current period actual period like low-key insanity not as bad as last week but last week I'm oof I'm sitting here like girl can we be regular like I was so tired like I was napping pretty much like I was like working probably like a cool nine to three and then I would just sleep until six and then I would wake up make dinner and then go back to sleep like it was really bad um but yeah, my period is just getting on my nerves. But like, realistically, I don't even need a pad. Like, I could probably use a pain leader. I do not really bleed. It's just I've been bleeding up in this brain of mine. You see, the symptoms are the same. So, you know, it is what it is. But I was like, please, can I have my period, please? Because I didn't want my period on the cruise. And everybody was like, I was like, who's got their period? And they're like, I got, I got my period. I got my period. And I'm like, bro, I'm literally begging for my period. Like, I need to start bleeding now because I... I don't like wearing tampons. I was gonna I say really, maybe you gotta wear a um. I mean, you gotta drink some vitamin C. Like girlies were saying, that'll make your period come. Oh no, no, it's here. It's here. I uh, day one was Saturday or Sunday. So yeah, every day with lip gloss, feeling good. But speaking of Saturday, I had to get real mama bear ish, and I feel like that's who I am. To, like a lot of my friends, but for my sisters, I don't play. Okay, I do not play. And so my sister had a really bad night Friday night with like her, her teammates or whatever. And so she literally took the bus at, at 5 a.m. to get to downtown Denver because we were going to have a sister nail date. Her appointment was at 8. My appointment was at 10. I texted my nail tech. I said, hey, um, we booked our appointments back to back. Is it cool if I sit in your, in, on your couch? It's like totally fine. Cool, cool, cool. I get a text in the morning. Hey, my son is sick. And my sister. My son is sick. Um, I can't do your 8 a.m. appointment. I'm so sorry, girl. I could do 440. And my sissy's like, she sent it to me. And I'm like, oh, no. Nah. So I literally was like, hey, girl, like, I need a four-hour time slot. Like, we're about to go on vacation. My sister literally, um, drove, like, took the bus from Boulder. Mind you, she got stuck in the snow on the freeway. They had to, like, move on the freeway on the bus. Yeah. What? Time. And freezing. Like, it was ridiculous. And I was like, I'm not going to drive to you at 10 a.m. and then drive again to you at 4.40 because I live farther. I said, you need to, we need to figure out a a four hour time slot. End up figuring it out. But the thing is, because she said 4.40 and and then she was like, hey, I could do a 4 p.m. and a 6 p.m. I, because we've been texting back and forth all freaking day, I had 4.40 in my head. So we go to Sephora to return some stuff. I actually like dropped a bag in my terms in Sephora and I got a lot of new makeup I've been wanting and seeing on TikTok. So I felt great. Like oh, wow. Sephora really ate with the 20% discount. And I've been wanting to be a foundation brush and concealer brush girly. Cause I've been just a, a 
Beauty Blender, and I'm like, oh, I see a difference. So very excited for that. I also got the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray and the one size um, setting powder. I've been wanting that for I don't know how long. So very, very freaking excited because my Morphe setting spray just decided to stop spraying. It's supposed to be a continuous setting spray. It just stopped. I said, okay, won't be getting setting spray from TJ Maxx again. So I guess that's my fault. Um, but uh, yeah, so went there and I had 440 on my head. I checked the thing. I'm like, you know the anxiety attack I had when I had to tell y'all that we need to, we couldn't get massages? That's what I had. My stomach, yeah, my heart dropped into my stomach. And I'm literally like, I said, okay, we got to go. We got to go. And Lola's like, what's going on? I said, no, just don't worry about it. And I'm like, hey, um, I said, we are on our way. I had 440 in my brain. I'm sorry. Um, but we are on our way. And she's like, oh, no, girl, I'm so sorry. That's why I said confirm four to six. I said, with all of the messaging, I got confused. I'm sorry, but we are on our way. And she was like, and she didn't text. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. I will be knocking at that door. Okay. And she's like, right. okay. Well, she's talking about some, well, I have a cold. Okay. We'll double mask. That's okay. We're getting our nails done. Okay. So yeah. I ended up just like, I was like, Hey, she's like, I know. I'm sorry. Like my, my son's health comfort. I said, I understand that, but you canceling day of, and this is not the first time we're going to get our nails done. Like I, like I understand your baby's health comes first, but this is not the first time your baby has been sick. Get that baby some multivitamins. I don't know. I didn't say that, but in my head, I'm like, that baby need to start drinking some oranges or something because the baby's always sick. And it's oh. like, mom, like every single time I have a, it's she canceled on me because she's sick or her baby's sick. And it's like quarterly, quarterly, how many hay boos are, is actually respectable? One, you get one hay boo per quarter. I've gone to you for a quarter and I've got three hay boos. Mm, 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 mm. It's, it's but, just giving fine a new nail tech. She knew she was doing the wrong though, because she gave us a free set. Because I was on my way to find a new nail tech, but we're gonna go back one more time <laughs> because this is a free set, and I'm not passing that up. But because the thing is, like, Glenda needs a home. She needs a home, and me having nubs is not a home. I'm like, I got to take care of my what's mine. Okay, my yeah. child has to have a home. So that's where we're at. Um, Got my nails done. My sister's nails are super cute. And the thing is, she has never posted my nails. And I feel like that's a real dig at me. I don't know what I did to her. She's never posted my nails. But the thing is, she posted Joy's nails the day of. I was like, <laughs> oh, so this is giving personal. And the thing is, she literally, but the thing is, my sister was saying, like, what are some sets that you don't really, like, do often? And she was like, not many, very many people get French, French tips. Like, I think they're a little outdated. No, I'm full well. I'm about to get French tips. <laughs> What she asked me for? A lady, like what? What? Oh, wow! And you probably got French chips last time, so she knows Mom. what she was doing. Uh, Moms, when I tell you, every single time I finish a set, she finishes set. She goes, "Is that it?" Because she wants you want to bejewel my whole hand. No, mind you, I got bejeweled and they fell off in my sleep last night. So now I got glue on my fingers, and wow. this is day three of me having my freaking nails done. But y'all, we have talked a lot. Let's go ahead and get into the topic at hand today. We've been wanting to this episode. It's just, we didn't really know what angle to go at. And, you know, we, this is, this is a touchy topic a little bit. Like, how really do you talk about this? But it's a big part of our lives. And we, this is all about sharing our lives and the do's and don'ts of adulthood and what we just trying to do. So moms, let's go get, get go ahead and get right into it. Um, the topic of today is trusting God in your twenties, maybe a new title, but that's the topic that we have it at the moment. And to start off, moms, what did your childhood look like church church slash faith wise? Um, yeah, so I I come from a very religious family on both sides, like everybody in the church, especially my mom's side, like she grew up in the church, like going to church every single day, whether that's to be a part of the choir or to go to Bible study, like whatever it is, um, especially my mom's side, she grew up very heavily in the church. And my dad too, but especially with her. Um, so growing up, we were always like, God was always the center of our household. But since we were military, we moved around a lot. And realistically, we lived on a military base. It was very hard to find like a stable church or like mm -hmm. find a church that we feel like we could feel home in. And a lot of times, like sometimes the church that would be on the base or like near us would be a white church. And I remember we went once because my mom was like, we're not going to spend Easter not at, not at church. We mm -hmm. gonna, we're, we're going to Easter. Yeah. 
and we went to like it wasn't an all white church, but it was just like a mixed church. I remember being like, huh, like they don't, they don't, they don't really do things the same here. Like the songs are different. Oh, it was they, got of, a, they got a lot of words. Oh my gosh, white songs oh. have a lot of freaking words. Let's keep it a sixteen and just Man. say it over and over again. Frick. I, I said, oh wow, like um, yeah, not we ended right on time. I tell you that. But besides that, like it was just it wasn't the same feeling. And so I feel like for a lot of my childhood, it was like we always had our own personal relationship with God in the house. But as far as finding a consistent church, we always would go back to either my mom's church back in California or like if we're visiting my grandparents, like we always go to their church. So mm-hmm. either way, like we are always going to church at some point, but it was just a matter of which one. And I would say we we definitely had our fair share of churches that we experienced. Wow. And it wasn't until I got older that I realized that sometimes even though you, you want to practice your faith and you want to be in church every single Sunday, it really depends on the church. Cause growing up, I remember there were some black churches near us that we had tried out. And as a kid, like I'm just sitting in the pew. I really, I'm, I'm there and I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm engaged, but realistically I would rather be doing something that a kid would want to do. Right. Mm-hmm. And I remember us getting home. My mom being like, yeah, no, like they, the way they move, it feels a little funny. And mm-hmm. I never got that until I was older. And I realized like, a lot of people in the church can move funny and feel like just because they are in the church and are religious that they automatically get a free pass to heaven. But Mm -hmm. it's like, realistically, your day to day life, how you live is is not okay. And she didn't get into details with it with me about it. But as I got older, I realized like, it's probably something of how the pastor and his family move or just how people in the church um, act and their comments sometimes because realistically, I think church people and I say that not to be like, okay, like we're categorizing them, but a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the older generation in the okay. church can be very, very judgmental mm. and it is supposed to become as you are realistically, yeah. God loves all of us. But I think that in black churches, sometimes that line can get really misconstrued mm-hmm. and it's like, I, I really don't know what was going on in them churches. And especially as I got older and realized how many like cases there be against pastors and against just things happening. Facts. You don't truly know. So mm-hmm. I kind of realized that once I got older, um, but my family was always like, even if we're not going to church every single Sunday, you know, God is the center of this household. Absolutely. So like all of that was still instilled in us. But yeah, it was definitely very different. I feel like, especially if you moved around a lot, you probably understand like the feeling of not really having a home church. Mm-hmm. And as I got older and like, I was trying to figure out my faith for myself. It was trying to figure out, do do I define my religion as like me going to church every Sunday or like me having my own personal, personal. relationship? With because they're very different. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, on my end, I've, I've said this several times, but um, I'm a pastor's granddaughter and daughter on both sides. My grandpa actually had a mega church growing, um, growing up. So like my church experience is a little bit different, same, but different because like, it will be like after Sunday service or okay. Not one service. We would have, one like 8 a.m service 1 11 a.m service um and then we would have a spanish service and i know this i don't know what song is called but it's they all kept on saying santo santo and i would just (laughs) love saying santo like i love and the thing is i would be like taking a nap and like my grandpa's off something because like pastor's granddaughter like i would go to the armor bear um and be like can you let me in i need to be in here like it was so big like my grandma had a shower in her office like, oh my god oh it was huge like i we don't really have i'm sure we have pictures but like that church was so huge it's now a dd's discounts <laughs> that's like how big it is yeah oh my yeah. god it's really insane but um but yeah it was it was really cool being a pastor's granddaughter um but i and i got close to like a lot of the like apostles i, I know all the words or whatever but like we went to so many churches such so many hours of my childhood were spent was spent in the church and I will say one good thing my mom didn't do even though we were pastor's kids she didn't make us feel like pastor's kids because pastor's mm-hmm. kids can be some of the most horrible people that you've ever met like I remember going to Christian camp and it was super super fun but you could tell who felt entitled because their parents were pastors at a mega church and like they'd be like yeah I'm this stuff and I'm like what the frick is this dynamic? Now, did I have a crush on him? That's neither here nor there because I was also under the influence of, oh, you are that, this, that, and the third son and you're fine. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, I would, I would say like my mom, she literally would make us these folders of like, wake up, read your devotionals. We had like 
inscribed Bibles of like the like message Bibles. It was I to this day I love the message. I cannot read anything but the message. The thous, the ar- arts, the shalls, I cannot do. Break it down to me like a child, and like oh my gosh, the message is the best way for for me to do it. And also listening to the Bible is my best is how I can do it because I especially Psalms. I'd be like, okay, what what am I? It's very hard to follow sometimes. And I remember feeling like when people say they read the Bible, I'd be like, are y'all, are y'all getting it? Cause I, I used to just read it like cold Turkey, just start reading it. And I used to be like, I'm confused. And I think, I think that also probably was why I was frustrated as a kid of trying to find my own faith. Cause I was like, I don't really know where to start. You know, like I know I should go to church and I should be this, like, there's a, there's a prototype of what a good Christian looks like, but I was always like trying to figure out how to even do that. You know, literally how, and like, you can look up and be like, oh, I want to be like her or I want to be like this pastor's wife or da 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 But you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. I will say Greenleaf, a lot of my family has watched that and they're like, did they make a show about like the Arizona churches? Like it's like really mm. a really solid depiction of what it looks like to be that high in church. And like my grandpa and my grandma have doctorates in like biblical studies, like they yeah. went to they went to Bible school. Like that's what they spent their money on. They didn't go to college. Well, I guess they went to Bible college, but like they moved to California to go to Bible school and be taught by not T D Jakes, but um a T D Jakes esque guy. Um Oh wow. Yeah. yeah, that was that's my uncle Ryan and my my Aunt Brenda. She literally has her doctorate. Yeah. And that's why I was like, Oh my gosh. Like I felt like especially if you come from a family like that, that really puts the church, the church and God top, mm-hmm. it is kind of a lot of pressure because if you feel like you're trying to navigate your faith, it's like, well, why don't I have it together? Or like, why am I having questions about like just my religion in general? And I don't, I don't really have anybody to ask about it realistically. I don't because they be hush hush on the real topics. But like, for example, all of my aunts and uncles are, are like, for example, my uncle, my aunt, my, my, I guess my step aunt married my uncle and now she's a pastor's wife. It's like, well, where's her credentials? Like, mm. um, you know, like I get real like, mm, how is he an apostle? Who named him an apostle? Like things like that is like, that's what my growing up, like I would be in the church just running in the back, you know, while there was this, the sixth service at a night happening. Or I like literally go into Christian camp and seeing a girl, like, I don't know what was going on, but we all had to clear out. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah and i was like um what's getting released in here you know like mm. I, I don't like this like you know that you play oceans you play oceans-esque song Some, <laughs> something's gonna pop out like at the party and it was just like you see a lot of stuff growing up in the church and I've, i i really enjoyed my time but like i said one thing my mom didn't do she not did not make us feel like pastor's kids and she didn't force the bible down our throats she did write mm. it write it in our like 7 a.m. read your devotionals. But if we didn't, it was like, we didn't get a whooping. It was just like, okay, please do it tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't know how she did it because we were in the church so much, but she didn't make us feel like you, you need to be Bible thumpers. Because I feel like if she were, if she were to make us be Bible thumpers at seven, I, which I mean, I knew all the words to all the gospel songs, but that's just because I enjoyed them. I enjoyed the me- melody of it. Um, yeah. I think I would, we like, as kids, we really like to be stubborn and do the opposite of what our mom said. And her reverse psychology definitely worked. But if she would have made us like that, I think I would probably be atheist because of how much I'd be like, well, no, you're telling me to do this. I don't want to do this. So shout out to my mom for real. But like, I really enjoyed my time as a pastor's kid. But now that I'm an adult, it's like, I have never had a free Sunday. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and now on to our next question, um, which is what are some things you started slash stopped doing once you got out on your own as an adult? For me, I just, I had never had Sundays to myself. I had never had a Sunday I could sleep in unless church was canceled for some weird reason, you know? Yeah. Um, and I actually start taking Sundays as a day of rest, like just doing whatever I want. Like work is a lot. Like, and I, and yeah. I haven't, I also haven't found a, a decent church home. I haven't looked. I will say I have not looked because there's been a lot of moving, a lot of moving parts, but like, I really do enjoy my Sundays to myself, you know? No, and, yeah. and I definitely do need to start like taking as like a day of rest, but also being intentional about like, 
still spending time with God, but at since I moved out, since I moved to North Carolina, I have I have taken Sundays to myself and wow, this is how y'all live? Like <laughs> ooh, wow. What about you, moms? Um, yeah, I mean for me, my mom had had I mean, of course I don't think she would describe it like this, but the way that she describes it is like First of all, she grew up in a Pentecostal a Pentecostal church, and she feels like it was very, wow. very, very strict to the point where, like, they would come. She told me one story about how she came once to church, and she had a little small slit in the back of her skirt. And one of the one of the ushers, somebody pulled her aside and was like, "That's inappropriate to be wearing in the house of the Lord." Mind you, it was like a long skirt, but it had a little slit. Mm-hmm. She was like, "That's inappropriate to be wearing in the house of the Lord." Took her to the back and sewed up her skirt. So like the the amount of strictness that I think you can really get of being in the church at all times. I think it definitely takes you moving away from that to even know, which I feel like is probably why my mom specifically was not like really, really pushing it down our throats because she probably understands what it's like to have that happen and how it can kind of almost, like you said, have the reverse effect of make you feel like it's not even about God anymore. It's more about like policing you, you know, and, and like really being strict about what you can and can't do. So when I left, when I left home, that's when I was kind of like, okay, I want to build my relationship with God on my own and figure out what that looks like. And all I did look at the churches around me, all of them, all of them are either not my religion or they speak Spanish. And either I learn El Espanol or I got to travel to like a whole, like, like a whole borough to go to go to church. So it really was just a matter of convenience. And that's when I started asking my friend Sam what she does as well, because she'd be watching like actual just like videos online of different churches. So that's when I kind of got into that. But realistically, I was like, I also want to feel like I'm a bad Christian because I don't go to church. And that was a really big thing for me to get over. Like huge, like, I'm not a bad person. I'm not like going to hell because I'm not at church every Sunday. But I feel like having that consistency is what makes most people feel like, oh, I go to church every single Sunday, so I'm good. But it's like, realistically, are you even living the word of God day to day? Day to day, yeah. Because if you're not doing what you're supposed to do on Saturday and you come on Sunday, not to say that, you know, you have to be an angel all weekend, but it's like, realistically, like, it's kind of contradicting, especially if you have a mentality that's like, because I go to church, I'm now a better Christian than you. And that's what kind of made me even nervous, like joining groups and stuff, because I was like, I don't want to feel judged because there's a lot of different like groups amongst like young women to join that, you know, you can just like read the Bible together, or just build like relationships with people that are your age. Yeah. And kind of part of me was a little afraid, like in full transparency, because I was like, I don't want to feel like I'm a bad Christian or like I am not as religious as them or like there's any type of judgment there because I'm asking questions or like I'm like confused about something and I'm like I genuinely don't know about this you know like you can't quote quote scripture I don't got memory like that I promise you I don't I don't like I can't just do it off the top of my head and I don't want to feel like I'm being judged for that not to say most people would but it definitely is a a, something you think about when like you're finally out on your own and you're in your 20s and you want to have a relationship with God and it's just like how do you even go about that like I think I even yeah I wrote down questions I had here because these were real questions that I had that I was literally afraid. I was like, I don't know who to ask about this. And I also don't want to feel like I'm being judged if I ask them, but like in full yeah. transparency, if anybody else felt like this, cause I talked about this with my other friends that are going through their like personal um, journey with God. Mm-hmm. One example, if God already has a plan set out for me, how do I have free will? That's if a everything, really hard one. And it's so hard. And it's like, I've, I've watched, I've watched videos on this and it's like, you have to have trust in the process and have faith. It's all about faith. But realistically, this was something I really, really am still grappling with. Like if everything is in God's plan, how do I have free will? How do, how do I have like control over my life? Like, is there a point of me even like that? That is a really hard thing for me to wrap my head around Mm -hmm. that I'm still working on. Um, also, I mean, this is a generic one that I used to have as a kid. Cause I remember being in, in class in like, like eighth grade and then talking about slavery and me thinking about like, okay, like if slavery happened, why didn't God intervene? This is a very, this is a very small example, but just yeah. examples of bad things happening to good people that are still Christians or yeah. people that still have faith. Why does that happen? That's something that I also had to grapple with as an adult, like, these questions that I had that were making me kind of like not doubt my faith, but just wonder like what's going on, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it's really just moments of like full transparency with yourself because I was also reading like um, 
like notes from people that are on their journey with God. And they're like, realistically, you have to ask these questions to either a pastor that you trust or somebody that's close to you that also is further along in their journey. That way you can get that out because you don't ever want to have doubt or you don't ever want to have these questions lingering in your head and you don't answer them. And mm -hmm. it's like, for me, like my faith never wavered, but it was always questions that I had. And I was like, I don't even feel comfortable going to church and asking somebody this because I'm gonna feel stupid. I'm gonna feel like I should know this, you know? And you have to like foster that relationship in order to be able to, or be comfortable asking this question. So even a pastor, you can't walk up to a pastor. Hey, uh, good sermon, uh, quick question. Yeah, talk the way. Yeah, you know, like you, you can't, and like that's one, you gotta find, you gotta find somebody or a solid church home to be able to even be comfortable asking the pastor, trust the pastor, develop a relationship with the pastor, then ask the question. That's a lot of freaking steps. A lot of steps. And realistically, I'm still on find the church and establish the relationship because for me, I want to feel like when I go to church, it's home and it mm -hmm. feels safe. And it feels like somewhere where you can ask those questions one-on-one -on -one and feel okay about it and yeah. not feel like you're you're not a good Christian because you ask those things. And I yeah. feel like sometimes a lot of people do have those type of questions, but a lot of people are either afraid to speak on it or they're like, oh, like I have faith. And it's like, everyone has faith, but you can still have questions because logically you think about those things. And I know mm -hmm. as a kid, I thought about them. I never brought them up. And it wasn't until I was an adult and I was like, I really do have to think through all these things just to have like, just to start on my journey realistically, you know? Big facts. Big facts. Yeah. But mom's... um next question what are some things you've been wanting to do but have been putting off about your religion um finding a good church um in colorado we're going to be here for at minimum one more lease after this lease so i finally have somewhere that i'm like i'm not moving for yeah. a long time um so finding a good church reading the bible as a whole i have tried to read the bible probably every single year of my life since i could like i would say probably since like 15 16. And I mm. failed every single, I have, I don't even, I can't even imagine how many times I restarted Genesis. I can't <laughs> imagine. So I was like, you know what? I'm tired of reading Genesis. Let's start in the New Testament. And I will say I'm extremely scared of Revelation. Like mm. I haven't never even started to read the book of Revelation, but like, I do not know. And, but one of my goals for uh, my 25 before 25 is reading a nonfiction book every month. And that counts as a nonfiction book. <laughs> Every single book of the Bible, that's a book. So that, that's what's helping me on my journey. But reading the New, New Testament now, I will give y'all, when I read Revelation, that will be my rose, but also maybe my thorn. Because I don't know if I'm going to have nightmares. Like, like even watching um, Left Behind, oh, I was in shambles after watching that book, uh, watching that movie. Bro, the scene starts, the, book, the movie freaking starts out literal people on the airplane seats empty just just closed it's the rapture and the people done got left behind the freaking antichrist is poisoning bibles bro cr crazy so i can only if that's a movie i can only imagine what this freaking now i'm talking about book revelation is like so i'm gonna finish new testament i i it's i have 90 day challenge on um on the bible app so i'm gonna once I finish that, I will be posting the story because that that is going to be a feat of my life because I know literally I've been needing to I want to finish something about the Bible. I just want to finish something. Get it I'm, done. Yeah. I will say I'm very tired of I'm very tired of Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus. I will. I've read that so many times. But um, yeah, reading the Bible as a whole, that's definitely my 20. That's not on my 25 list, but that's neat. That's something I really need to get done. Um, yeah. Being intentional about praying about things, uh, pr praying even when things are good. Mm. Oh my God. And not just praying when things are going bad, but just yeah. consistently. Yeah. Bro, when I tell you every single deck of competitions, I was on my knees. Bro, hands and knees. I promise. Hands and knees. Like, like just ma making deals. Like, I promise if you, like, you know, so Bro. praying even when things are good, like, you know, like, thank the Lord. Like, I'm so glad you provided me with these things. Like, just being really intentional about being, um, being not respectful, being um, grateful for the things that I have, because like, for example, like me being able to get birth control for free. Thank you. I used to be like, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay for birth control? Cause I didn't have health insurance. Like literally right. little things like that, just being grateful um, and consistently tithing. My mom, my mom is a lady of many things, but she has a very close relationship with God. And she like, 
she's a Bible encyclopedia. I will give her that, you know? Mm-hmm. And she, she told me, mom and sister, she was like, if you guys tithe all next year, your income can double. And I said, wait, who you hear that from? <laughs> <laughs> and my mom, like she, like, I'm talking about tongues, whole nine. Like she be, she be talking to that man. So, um, consistently tithing. And I'm like, not, I was consistently tithing earlier this year, stopped. I need to start again. Um, so yeah, those, those are mine, but like, I really do want to find a really good church because like, and I want to be those, one of those people in church that be taking notes. I never have to Like, what are they writing? Writing, bro. But I really, I want to find a church where I understand the message so much that I want to take notes. Because if you're mm-hmm. talking so high and mighty, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. I oh really my God. Don't. There was one pastor that we went to when we lived in Virginia. And even as a kid, I was like, wow, like I actually understand what he was saying. Everything he said, he was relating it to real life. And people were in there crying like yeah, every Sunday. And I was like, that's really like a great pastor if they can make everything that they're talking about and take the word and actually make it relatable to what you're experiencing. Mm-hmm. And I can tell when it would hit somebody because they'd be like on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I was like, she needed to hear that today. Yeah. 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 Mm. Listen, you, my, my goal is to first find a church or even if it's even if it's just like a consistent live stream I could watch every Sunday. Yes. If it's virtual or in person, find a church that I can find be consistent with and get to know the pastor um and just build that trust because I kind of feel like it does help to have somebody navigating that with you and I have been trying to do it on my own but I feel like I do need that guidance and I need that guidance outside of my family's church I feel like I need to I need to develop that outside of (laughs) what I've like grown up on yeah um and for me like I first of all it's been it's been a little rough trying to find people online I will say I don't know if you guys know about Mike Todd but yes, uh, I have very bad vibes from Mike Todd. I don't know if you saw his Easter performance. Girl, it's a performance every time, bro. It's very, like, he'd be having, sec- he'd be playing Cardi B in the church, secular music in the church. And look up, oh, wait, girl, hold on, because I literally was trying to find it. Bro, Kelly, God. Kelly gave me an entire deep dive on why she don't mess with, like, the new age pastors. I'm like, it's so hard because they are relatable, but it's just like, you I aren't love- putting God at the center of your sermon you're putting dancers it's listen like like literally this this is his like hold on i don't know if y'all can see this just just look up mike todd easter performance and that's all you need to see like what? fire like look at this why it's easter where's the pastels at it's easter like not even just that it's like they are literally like like twerking on stage and I, I used, I watched, I actually started off with Mike Todd because I watched his video on like relationships and it was really good. He had some solid ones in the beginning, but once he started gaining. <sighs> and it just makes it really hard because it's like, dang, like you want to find a pastor you can trust. Mm-hmm. And then originally I was watching his videos, but after okay. that, I said, oh no, you got to go. I got to find it. There was this, there was this white pastor that I would watch before every deck of competition. <laughs> <laughs> And I, he had a faith sermon, and it really, like, it really fueled my fire. Like, he really ate it up. I'm not going to hold you. I got to find it because he – I got to find that man. I'll post it on the story, um, or I'll put – I'll actually send it so she can put it, this link in. But that man – I really quickly, I think he's dead by now. Like, he he was a very older white man. Like, he had a southern accent, and he really got you together. He gathered you up. <laughs> gathered you up. Yeah, no. Um, mm. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, but what, um, anything else, moms? Oh, yeah. So mainly that's my goal. Also, I do have the Bible app, and that's been really helpful too. Um, just like getting daily notifications because that kind of keeps me consistent. Yeah. Like if I get that notification, I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, time mm-hmm. to clock in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I will say also, Sarah Jakes Roberts, love her down. If you are looking for a good pastor to watch their videos and start off with, I have never been moved by a virtual video. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Literally just, she has videos on YouTube, just start mm-hmm. on her videos and that's a very good place to start. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I feel like it definitely also listening to a female pastor also very like, I've never had that experience before. And oh. I just feel like, yeah, like I've never, all my pastors before have all been male and I feel mm-hmm. like it definitely does help. So yeah. if you're looking for somebody to start off with, I'd recommend her. And there's also, y'all know, listen, this is very contradicting for me because we have a podcast. I am not a full out podcast girly. I really try to be, but realistically, I'd rather read a book. 
Mm. I can't, I can't do it. But there is a podcast that my friend listens to. Um, where is it? What is it called? Oh, shoot. I think I just lost it. Hold on, y'all. Technical <laughs> difficulties. Oh, God Plus Mental Health Podcast by Rosalind Renee. Oh. So, you want to start there? Start yeah. There. She's also black. So oh. just give it a shot. But realistically, like for me, it was just like separating my childhood experience to from what I'm going through now and building my relationship with God first and then trying to introduce church into it as well. Because I think church can sometimes, depending on what church you're in, right. some churches can be toxic. So just making sure that you don't associate that toxic experience with God either. Cause I think some people have really oh. bad church experiences growing up. And now, oh. like you said, they're atheists. Like they're like, I don't even want to deal with it anymore. Mm-hmm. Cause the people, the people, the people will, the people will make it. And I, huh, so I really get frustrated when I do see people like, Oh, just cause you go to church constantly. That means that you are saved. That is not the case no. because there's a man that my grandma knows in California he um his wife had died right she was the pastor's wife and literally a month later he was having her friend over and long story short her friend is driving that lady's car moved in with him is now like literally i don't know if it was it was already a fair while they were married or what happened but very shortly after she called herself consoling him and it was a whole uproar because the church is like how can you be moving on so quickly from the pat, like your own wife, like the pastor's wife just passed away, wearing her jewelry, wearing her clothing, driving her car, sleeping in her bed. And it kind of makes you question, like if you're the people leading your church are doing things like that, can you trust that they can guide you on your journey? Because I personally would lose trust in a pastor if that's happening in his personal life. Like, no. And literally um, when I was in Puerto Rico, we were playing this game and it was like, um, what would you do if you saw your pastor in the club (laughs) and we got into an argument about this because some people were like well you know i mean i wouldn't judge him and i said absolutely like what if he's not doing anything in the club i said absolutely not i'm looking to my pastor to be the example of what i should be doing as a christian Mm -hmm. because he's like the pinnacle i feel like if if you want to call yourself a pastor you've done all these things to get up there can't say you can't have no fun but play go do that at at your house i don't want to see you in the club see literally Mm-mm. literally and, and and you know it was kind of like oh well you know he's not really doing anything if he's not doing anything in the club i would think he's just there for you know a friend or and it's like realistically as at the level of a pastor you shouldn't even have a desire to be in a place where you can just easily sin like that why is that even a, a question it's, it's and the, the girls out i mean we know what we wear to the clubs like we know what happens in said clubs okay what? If my pastor was at the club, I'm no longer going to that church. It's just point blank. The only club a pastor should be at is a jazz club. <laughs> yeah. I feel like they love a good jazz club. Boys yeah. and girls club. Those are the only two clubs they listen. Play. Listen. I no. Listen. No. And the thing is, when I think of pastor, I think of my grandpa's. <laughs> Them? No. Everybody in the club getting tipsy? What? <laughs> Betsy Ray? No, like, no. I just, I have a very high standard for what I feel like I want out of my church and my pastor. And like, it just, it, I'm very strict about that. Cause realistically, I'm the one that's supposed to not be perfect. I'm the one that's working on that. Mm-hmm. The pastor should not be still, he trying to figure it out too. Why are you at the club? We shouldn't be in the same position. You shouldn't, you need to be ready. What's that choir doing? Are they at practice? <laughs> that's what you should be figuring out. And that's not the, the only, only club, club, but it's like, you can go to tennis lessons. You can do some yoga. There's so many things that I feel like, and maybe this is us just holding them at a higher pedestal. But like, if yeah. you call yourself, if you're calling yourself a pastor and you've done your due diligence, going to school, like having a mentor, da 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 da. Uh, no, that's not okay. Yeah. That's not okay. And maybe maybe it's strict, but if if I'm coming to you to make sure I can get to heaven, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, absolutely not. And realistically, they are on a higher pedestal. That's what that's what you're for. So I am, I am for sure holding you to the highest possible degree. And I'm not sorry about it because realistically, how are people supposed to look up, look up to you if we're on the same the same pregame plan on Saturday night? Point. Points were made. Points were... Imagine. Imagine? I can't. No. I can't. Can. And I think that... I, I do agree with Kelly. I think sometimes new age pastors... 
they want to have that relatability factor because it does help with like people that might be turned off from religion because they're like oh well i just feel like it's it's too strict and it's stuffy da, 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 da. so they try to be more relatable but there's a difference between relatable and just disrespect absolutely and the lines can get blurred very very fast and half and see half. The, the black easter performance i i hadn't seen that I had it been in my for you paid i'm actually gonna go, go watch it after this but moms go watch that because i was in awe and I said, oh, wow, this is not this is not the Easter service I, I went to. I'll tell you that. I will say there's a church in Arizona. They do do a live live stream. But, um, I'm going to find it, put it in the show notes or something. When, every time I go to Arizona and I'm like, I don't want to go to my family's church because I, I, need, I want to separate myself. Yep. Um, they, every single time, sometimes they even do sermons with the first lady and the pastor. And I really do enjoy that when I'm talking about like couples and stuff. But like oh. he he's he's in the he's not in the gray he's in the black where it's like i'm relating to you and i will like put memes up on the screen and stuff like that but i'm not don't get it twisted at the end of the day the center is god and every time i leave like yeah that was a sermon and i understood every part of it and he even incorporates scriptures that may not be the message but he relates it he always goes back to the point of the sermon like he's he eats that pastor eats. And it, oh. I have a very high standard for pastors because I have seen a plethora of them in my entire life. Yeah, yeah. Let's drop his information. I'm going to drop Sarah Jakes because her sermons are life-changing. Yeah. But yeah, altogether, it really is about finding a good person that can just guide you. Because for me, I feel like I'm very much beginner on my journey, mm -hmm. at least as an adult. So as it's adult, like, yeah, you're really starting from ground zero. But I mean, honestly, that's I'd rather be starting than... They're not starting at all. So, yeah. yeah. But mom's um, last question, what are some things that you put into God's hands? Um, definitely my family's health and like mental health and just their state. Because um, I may not talk to all my family all the time, but like realistically, family drama gets worse and worse as you get older and older because you get, you understand more and more. Mm -hmm. And it just gets so irritating. And it's like, realistically, oh, I'm not, I'm not talking to them because da, 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 da. Literally the next time probably all my family is going to be together is the next time somebody dies. Like that's how bad the drama is. And it's just so, so irritating because it's like, and a lot of the drama is because of church. Mm. It, having, having church be the top, top in your family is a pro, but also can be a con because like, like I'm like, sometimes I wish I was a regular family because my family wouldn't, my regular family wouldn't be fighting about Oh, he he went to this church, and I don't like this pastor. Da, 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 da. Like, are we? This can't be for real. Like, I it sometimes should, feel like I live in Greenleaf. I will, it shouldn't be that political. It, and it gets very political very quick. Church is extremely political, so that that's definitely what I want to put in God's hands because I can't do nothing about it. Like, I got my life to worry about. You see what I'm saying? But we we, we need to get together. But that's it here or there. Um, pregnancy because like. That scares me being a woman, being a black woman, and also like not obviously my mom has had several kids and stuff, and Dammy's mom is a nurse, so I'm very excited about that. But just like I want to have a good pregnancy. Like since I was a kid, I have been praying that I have a healthy pregnancy because I've always been scared. I've always been scared. Me too. Me I, too. I, basically, the deal is if my first pregnancy doesn't go well, we will be doing a surrogate because like that's how scared I am. But if I have two, if I have a beautiful pregnancy the first time, we'll have another beautiful pregnancy. But that's how scared I am. I'm prepping years in advance because mm -hmm. just the doesn't, doesn't go right. And then just also kids overall, because like you could raise a kid 18 years and then they turn into like something horrible. Oh, you know? my God. That's that. Now, that's very scary. The amount of cases I've been seeing of like kids killing their parents out the blue or just school shooters or killing each other like molesting their siblings like the list goes on the list goes on and you really you don't know like you want you have a kid and you want to raise them up right but if like the outside world like there's just so so much like i understand people that just want to like homeschool their children and not ever take them out i get it i absolutely get it um uh, but yeah those are like those are like my top ones what about you moms um same up uh, for me i mean i feel like at least what you mentioned about family for me it's more of like deaths in the family which honestly i haven't had a death in the family that was immediate yet mm. i say yet because i know that death is inevitable but like 
I'm very scared for when that happens because I know I don't do very well with grief in general. Mm-mm. I don't. Mm-mm. And I know I don't yeah. handle it well. So that will be one time where I feel like I'm really going to have to lean on God because I don't know how I will react if anyone that I'm like close with passes away. I genuinely am afraid for when that happens because yeah. I think I will literally be a wreck. And I don't, I really don't know how to navigate that. And I feel like grief is something that of course you can lean on other people, but it really is like individual of how you get through it. So I feel like that's a very, very scary thought that I have very often, which is why like, I feel like I've been even more family oriented since I moved away because it's like, you are, you only get so many times to see your family a year. Facts. And when you add that up over the years and you don't know unexpected things that can happen, you just don't know when, if you see your family, it's the last time you see them. And that is a very scary thought to have. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that for sure. Um, Mm -hmm. Also my partner, like, I feel like whatever person I end up with, like marriage wise, that has to be a marriage around God. I feel like otherwise it's, it it literally does not work. Mm -hmm. It does not work. I just, I just have faith that whoever God has in store for me will be the right person for me. Um, I also did this thing where like, I saw, I saw it on some video and it was like, she wrote, basically exactly what she wants. She asked God exactly who she wanted, who she wanted in her life. And she, she did a password between her and God. And she was like, realistically, if my, if my husband is sent for me and like, God knows this is the person for me, he will probably say this password and I'll know. And it happened to her. Like the man set the password and she was like, that was an agreement between just me and God. So I actually wrote down my password and I like folded it up real nice and tight and Mm -hmm. put it in my desk. And Mm -hmm. I was like, realistically, like, I don't ever want to feel like I'm with somebody and this is not the person that God meant for me to be with. So shoot, whoever's out there, he'll know that password. And I have faith in that. But move Um, that note because he going to know what's in that desk. Oh oh, yeah. No, no, literally. I'll have to, yeah, I don't even know. I'll I'll have to maybe shred it or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, Yeah. So all together, like family wise, um, future family wise, like whoever I started family with, Kid wise, also, I feel like kids are a blessing and like you really can't control when they come. But whenever mm-hmm. they do come, that will have to be a whole a whole thing on how you how you're going to raise your kids, oh. what type of parent you want to be, how you want to go about that. If for me, my man has to be the same religion as me. I really can't do the mitts religion thing. Personally, yeah. I feel like it just comes up in everything when it comes to raising kids. So that'll be a whole bridge that I cross later. And yeah. also just like career wise and like life wise, what's meant for me. I feel like anytime I've made a huge decision, my intuition has always pointed to what I feel like is the right option. And like, I was watching one of the sermons and they were saying like your intuition and what you feel like you should be doing, that is God talking to you. Mm. Did not know that. Mm -mm. Did not know that. I said that gut feeling that you have, especially if it's really, really strong, like that is God talking to you and making sure that you are going down the right path. So you need to follow Mm. that. Mm. Ever since I heard that, I was like, oh, I'm following my gut every time. Yeah. Every time. And even if it seems like, oh, I might have made the wrong decision, it might be the right one in the long run. So mm-hmm. I have literally been sticking to that. Like, there is no tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and it has not failed me. Like, it has been working out so far. So overall, I mean, I don't know what we're going to what we're going to title this, mom. I don't know. Because like it's not- our journey, our journey with God so far, like, yeah, something like that. Cause or it's- like, like, God journey in your 20s or, or like, yeah, as an adult, Something yeah. with adult in it because like your kid relationship as a as a Christian or with God versus in your adulthood and out of the house, two completely different things. Completely, especially when you're out on your own and you got to figure out life for yourself. And there's sometimes where God is the only person you have. We're not a person, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. God is all you have, realistically. All you can talk to like, hey, what you doing up there? Like I got real, especially when things aren't going your way. That devotional <laughs> Bro. Listen, I learned how to just vent to God. And I I really got like, especially as a kid, I feel like I had to be very sincere, like very like professional when I was yeah. speaking to God in my prayers. I would overthink my prayers like crazy. Mm-hmm. Or I would get anxiety. I'd be like, thank you, God, for, for today. I want you to bless my family, keep them safe. Oh, but also bless my mom and bless my dad and my sister. Okay, but also bless my teacher because I don't want nothing to happen. Oh, but my, my, my siblings, everybody, like I would list everybody in the book. Because I was like, I don't want anybody else to not be blessed. Yeah. And I would be so anxious. Like, oh, my God, I forgot to mention my classmate in my prayer. Like, she, I hope she okay tomorrow. That anxiety as a kid, I don't understand where that came from. But I was like, OD with it. And I always felt like I had to be very, like, 
I was almost talking to God like like it was a professor or like somebody Very I had to be formal. Yeah. You know, and and once I realized like you can talk to God how you talk, not to your friends, but like you can talk to God in your in your real voice. You yeah. can just talk about your problems because he knows what you mean and he know he already knows what you're going through anyway. Once I realized that, that took so much pressure off of prayer. I was like, wow, I can really just vent to God and not feel like it has to be a very, very formal prayer. I could just talk to God and be like, God, this happened today. I really just need the strength to do X, Y, Z. And it doesn't have to be something that I'm overthinking. Yeah. And that has been a huge part of my adult journey, at least, because Mm -hmm. as a kid, I was a wreck. You was going through it and on underneath. You was like, okay. And then, and how long was you praying, moms? Girl, however long it took. (laughs) Cover everybody. Wreck. Oh goodness! Well, the yeah. comes up with all our titles, so I know she's gonna come up with a nice one. Um, I definitely am excited for like posting because I'm like, what are your like top five Christian songs? Like, I know you probably can't come up with <laughs> the dome, and I have to look at my playlist, but definitely like, for example, my my friend Fee, our friend Fee, she's on like her Christian walk, and she's like, girl, like I'm sitting here all these songs that I grew up with, and she's like, I've never heard you before, never heard. Oh, oh yeah, well, it's giving playlists. It's giving it's playlist. playlist. And we have been talking about making a new playlist because one of the girlies, um, we're going to, let's get into calls from the request line because one of the girlies actually did ask. Um, I don't think it's on here, but we can we can still like create one. So one of the girlies asked for um, a playlist for us to just basically list our favorite songs. So we're actually just going to create one on Spotify. And mm-hmm. hopefully, I don't know if you can make like, a playlist that everybody can add to but maybe if everybody just start adding y'all favorite songs we could do it monthly like put in the group me maybe like yeah. december type of black girl december or something like that or type of, yeah like that that i feel like that'd be really really fun um and we yeah. can all listen to it together and you can see who collaborates with it what is in the yeah. link out in the group me so definitely tap into the group me if you want to um do a collective one but i know she asked for five of each let me see what i wrote down because i definitely had it somewhere um oh, yeah i had it in the last notes yeah. um Okay, so maybe it was living with the man then. Uh, let's see here. I said, okay, um, Kingston by Faye Webster, very very calm. Numb by Men I Trust, very very calm. Bags by Claro, you can't go wrong with Claro. Um, <laughs> Lost without you by Robin Thicke. That is a my daddy used to sing that to my stepmom all the time, so it's like I love it. Um, Spoken Up the Window by Silk Sonic. And then Green Aphrodisiac is an honorable mention by Kareem Bailey Ray. Oh my gosh, I love me some Green Aphrodisiac. What about you, Lumps? Um, Hold on, I'm trying to find my list. Because where was this? Oh, it's all the way at the bottom of Living with a Man. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, a brand brand new one. I mean, everybody, Nicki Minaj. Realistically, Pink Friday in general. But when I first heard that, I said, oh, wow. Like, the hips was moving. It was giving real, real Jersey Club, for real. <laughs> um, I like it by the Marias. I really like their vibe. I don't know what to call it, that genre of music. But I feel like them and um, and Ray have a similar tone and similar mm-hmm. vibe. And I love me some Ray. She was, she was really holding it down. Um, also, from a woman, Mariah the Scientist. I don't care what y'all say about Mariah. People be saying she can't sing, yada, yada, yada. I love Mariah the Scientist Down. I'm going to stream that album. Mm. I love that whole album. Mm. So Mariah, for sure. Um, Outside All Night, Brent Fayez. You know, I love me some Brent Fayez Down. Um, Never Lose Me, Flo Millie. I've been waiting for that lady to drop that song for literally a good month. So I'm just, I'm just glad she dropped it. Because mm-hmm. they be holding them songs hostage. And there was another one that I just added. Oh, yeah. For, for All the Dogs. You know I'm a huge Drake stan. Mm-hmm. I, realistically the whole album but i've been playing virginia beach like on repeat mm. so probably that one but yeah if we if we make a group chat with um i mean like a group playlist it'll probably be a lot of different genres because literally i literally her songs versus my songs i'm like what are the beats per minute <laughs> per minute look like i said i don't know who these people are but i i, I bet they got a good song i i genuinely we have completely opposite taste in music whenever she mentions a song i have no clue who it is mm-hmm and um, <laughs> like for example lizzie mcalpine she's like oh was this that concert i'm like yeah she's like oh, okay I ain't never heard lizzie's song <laughs> i'm like go go lizzie <laughs> um but what how many I, I i put the first calls um from the other at um in the front how many things we, we have time for um i think we can do the first three okay 
Um, all right. First one also um, she said, what's considered good PTO accrual? I get four hours each paycheck. I just want to know what's normal. Um, I have to check in my week uh, work day, but I get 6.16 hours. I don't know how they came up with that number, um, but I but I can go negative 40 hours of PTO or a full week if needed with manager approval. So I would ask if you can go negative PTO because I don't think that's like every company does that. Um, what about you, moms? Um, so for me, I I don't get like accrued PTO. Like they just give us a set number of days at the beginning of the year and we could either use them or lose them. Mm. So I'm not too sure, but I would just say like, for me at least, I just talk to my manager about what times of the year are the most busy. And then I just plan my PTO around that. So mm. that's kind of how I go about it. And I just make sure that I'm not like, I mean, of course you can take PTO whenever's convenient, whenever you need to, but like I just determine it on when my team needs me really, because our days are kind of set in stone. Mm -hmm. And we have vacation by, which I didn't know like other companies don't have, but you can basically just like, if you want more vacation days, you can just buy them. Oh my gosh. Yeah, for like a lower discounted rate. So some people, if they know they're gonna need more vacation like later in the year, they just buy it and then they have it in their in their bank until the end of the year. But it does suck that it doesn't roll over. And I don't know what happens if you leave the company if they pay you out. But either mm -hmm. way, I'll be using every last hour. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, okay, next question. Mom, um, take this one. Yeah. Is it bad to take off from work if you don't have PTO? Not talking about financially, but would it make me a bad employee? I mean, if you don't have PTO, you can't take off. Or no, I guess you just don't get paid. I've never done this, so I'm not sure. I mean, if you're hourly, no, you want to, if, hmm. I'm, I'm not sure, but I mean, as long as your manager says yes, then it's yeah. realistically the only thing you need. It doesn't make you look like a bad employee. Yeah. I feel like the only thing that might is if they tell you it might not be the best time for the team, AKA we'd prefer if you didn't take the PTO and you still take it, it might, it might be a little riffraff, but realistically, I mean, people have to respect your PTO and if you're out of office, you're out of office. But just check in with your manager. If your manager says it's cool, you're good. And you probably don't have that much PTO because you're new. That's what I'm I'm assuming because I really didn't have much. I was like, oh, we're going to let this accrue. Um, but, yeah, if you're new and you got to go, well, when I started, I actually I only had six hours, but I took off a full day because I had to move my sister in. And my manager mm -hmm. knew ahead of time. Like, I'm not missing moving in my sister to college. Like, absolutely not. Um, so, yeah. yeah, as long as they're understanding, yeah, take it off. Yeah. Yeah, definitely take it off. Cause I mean, realistically, girl, you need you need personal time, mm -hmm. especially if you haven't accrued anything yet. Facts. Um, and this next one says, "Hey, I love the law school episode. If y'all ever have a med school person to interview, would love to listen to that. Thank you so much. Love the podcast. Yes. Yeah, so we we sent a message in the group me asking which girlies are in med school. Um, after talking about it, we were talking about potentially finding like probably a black woman that's a doctor and having her on because they can give the full scope of what it was like going through every step like not yeah. just medical school but I know y'all got to do like clinicals and trials you got shoot I was a business major so y'all let me know what it is yeah. but realistically like somebody that's done the full entire process so we're probably going to find somebody that is already an established doctor um I know a black a black woman that has her own practice here so we'll be trying to reach out to different people that we can have a black um doctor on here and also maybe even explore other career fields because we've had law school on so far we've had somebody trying to be an OBGYN right now we had creatives on we had hope on as um a business owner um uh, we had a, we had we've had a lot of different avenues like not just what our avenues are and what yeah. our so it's giving many career series so whatever other career field you guys want to see we can try to find somebody and tap into our own networks or just if you want to hear more about our career fields and like what we do um either way we got you yeah, but if your auntie or mama or godmama is an OBGYN or a sub, she, they've gone through all eight years plus of um, medical school, please DM us because um, we'd love to interview them. Yeah, facts. Do you want to do uh, this more? <laughs> this is not. Yeah, let's just do the next one. Cause... Okay. <laughs> Faith, how do you feel about Flying Frontier? Any warnings to know? Did it feel unsafe, et cetera? I said, just know it may get pushed. So I booked the earliest flight because it's a 50-50 chance that it will actually be the time I leave to, the air, on, on, to get on the flight and leave. Um, don't book them if you have a strict itinerary because you probably won't make it there, make it there in time. Um, it's a toss-up and you don't want to play with your time, especially if like you have somebody to pick you up. 
at an exact time you have an event. Frontier is not the time for day of events when you're flying in. Um, they will measure your backpack. So I will say Frontier site is a little bit confusing because they're like, do you want to pay for a carry-on? And at, at first I was going to pay for a carry-on because I was like, is a backpack a carry-on? No, a backpack is free, but they will stuff that backpack in the thing. Um, and if it don't fit you at the gate, you will pay exponentially more if you if you if you just pay it at the um the front the front desk or whatever or online because they don't play they mm -hmm. do not play they don't care what the lady at the back said the lady at the front said you're going to pay or you're not getting on that flight and i've seen it multiple times literally sh if you want to hear shouting go to a frontier um gate that's about, about to board yeah spirit's right there with them listen spirit <laughs> I, I've been nervous on spirit flights. First of all, the last one I went on, they didn't have nothing. Like, and it's only because I had that free credit I had to redeem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I've, I kind of put spirit and frontier and sometimes Allegiant in the same boat. I've never flown Allegiant. I put spirit under frontier just because I have only flown spirit once and it smelled like pee at the gate. So <gasps> yeah, it smelled, oh. it just felt like a, a Greyhound, like the Greyhound of um, flights. Um, but I will say also track their f prices as a few weeks if you can. Honestly, Frontier flights and Spirit flights are cheap, but I booked a $58 round trip flight that was originally 88 because I was tracking it day, day by day. It also, yep. I smell crazy. Sometimes Frontier does also smell crazy, but nothing like the pea smell I smelled in front on Spirit. Um, also, you don't get no snacks or Wi-Fi. Yeah, which is real ghetto. Mm-hmm. It's mm -hmm. real ghetto. A little press yeah. And, and and personally, I also recommend if you're flying Frontier or Spirit, don't get a connecting flight. Please. And the layovers may get longer. Even if it says 15 hours, it might turn to 26 hours. Listen, I am i don't think I've ever booked a, a, a Spirit or a Frontier flight with a stop. Because for one, you'll probably, if they, de if they delay the first one, you probably gonna miss the second one and they will lose your luggage. So yeah. just honestly save those two for the really cheap, like round trip, real quick, quick. less than five hours type of flights. Mm -hmm. Don't I, if I see a connecting and it says frontier, I do not pick it. I will no. fly another day. No, spirit makes me so nervous. Like I might have to drive it myself. So either way it's, it's slow for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But because this episode is already so long, we're not going to do hot topics, but we will get to you guys' other questions next episode and do hot topics. Um, but we we gave y'all we we've been feeding y'all for the last two weeks, I will say, because what where are we at right now, moms? We're at one thirty two. Remember last yeah. last episode was like was real long, and realistically, yeah. guys, the next season, the episodes, I'm just gonna tell y'all not, they're gonna be an hour, and hour. that might be harder for us to accept than y'all. I'm not gonna lie, because we be talking, we'll be but talking. yeah, so it'll be definitely an adjustment. Um, yeah, well, at least most some of them will be, but yeah, mm -hmm. you guys will enjoy it now. Is what we try to say facts facts yeah. um but yeah but hey great episode let us know what you guys' journey with god is also like when we post and stuff like we want to hear everybody's perspective because i feel like some people might relate to us but you might not so mm -hmm. let us know how you feel and if you have any resources too like any pastors you like to watch online podcasts or even your actual in-person pastors because we know some of the girlies have been are in the same cities in the same yeah. state so please please drop it please drop their internet please. Because pastors have Instagrams now. Weird, but, you know, I just like this. Yeah, they said it's 2023. Okay, I guess they can have an Instagram. But, uh, but, but yeah, y'all, we love y'all, and we will see y'all next Saturday. Bye, guys. See Bye. you later.